Okay, here we are now with this whole assembly off. Just pull that apart so I can show you what this has all been about. Let's just switch the old uh, low light thing on. Now, the problem we've got is this one here. On the genuine article, this whole area would have been the headspace adjuster. Um, that would have been great for what we're doing. I've got to machine this part out to take a paintball barrel, basically. Um, which is going to be fun. The idea being that, um, basically, I'm going to put this whole lump in a lathe. If I can find a lathe big enough, um, so I can chuck this. I don't think I'm, I would get this safely in my lathe. Um, once we've got this in a lathe, uh, I can then spin it up and we can turn this down and also turn out its size as well. Um, but I've got a feeling that when I do that, we'll be interfering with the way the actual uh, dummy barrel mounts. So I might have to get um, a little bit creative there as well. Um, still, uh, the main thing that I've sort of learned out of this is um, how we're going to do the other three brownings. The first one of the four is the, uh, the test for everything else to follow. Okay, my bye. Okay, well... I've managed to get the front part of the barrel mounted up between two centers. So I have a parallel between the two. Um, what we're going to fit now is uh, a tool called a steady. Um, because of course where this um, end center is, this is going to have to be replaced with a drill. Uh, because we're going to be drilling through the centre but the whole reason we hold it at the moment between two centres to produce a parallel is so that when I fit the actual steady um, everything is still parallel and then when we bring the drill in it's going to be bang in the centre ok, the steady fitted ok, so you saw it just before with the two centre points that make the parallel this is the um, strange tool that holds that parallel in place when I take the um, end post away, yeah? Now what we'll be doing now is this centre point here, which is the one we've just used between two centres to produce the parallel, we're going to be replacing that centre with a drill chuck and a, a big buggery drill. Okay, That's, uh, I'm not going to film this. <laughs> it's a big lump of metal and um, it's very scary, the whole lathe is basically rocking about and um, the only thing that makes it rock about, funny enough, is just that little sight mount that's what, one third of an hour, no not even that, it's, it's grams, it's so light, there's nothing to it but it only takes that much to unbalance the whole thing so um, if at the next game you see me and one of my arms are missing you know why. I will be standing back from this when I'm actually doing it. <laughs> if not, it's going to somebody else with a much bigger machine. <laughs> Enjoy. Hey buds, I've just done the uh, final abutment at uh, 22 mil. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, smoking a bit. <laughs> but then when you see the size of the drill, <laughs> you know why. <laughs> And it's uh, the whole machine has been rocking, the bench has been rocking. I had to kind of sit on the machine to keep it on the bench. Remember that uh, my machine is bench top mounted and I don't bolt my machine down. Remember, this is just a little prototype machine. I only ever do small alloy or plastic or carbon parts, you know, and that sort of stuff. And this has really got it shaking, but uh, you know. Um, testament to the old uh, Chester Model B, man. It's done everything I've asked it to do. Um, I did chat to a couple of other people about getting this turned out, and they wouldn't put it in their machine. They said it was too big. Pusses. Anyway. Aha. Oh, 22. There's only another three of these to go. <laughs> ah, pa. So you've just seen the uh, this put into the machine. And what I'm going to explain to you now is the whole reason we need to have this board out. This will end up flat, of course. Uh, we'll grind all this off. Um, I'm not going to turn down welding. that will probably end up breaking the tips on my cutting tools. And I like my cutting tools. Um, this is going to be where our paint barrel goes. But the actual size of the hole sets the parallel between this and the actual fire shader. Um, if I hold this sideways, um, 
You know, we don't want it like that. We don't want it like that. If I hold it up, we don't want it like that. We don't want it like that. Remember, there's um, there's going to be a huge, long, dummy 50 caliber barrel on here. And uh, once the paintball leaves the end of this barrel, I don't want it bouncing about inside the barrel. I want it to come out the barrel nice and cleanly. So this is probably the most important thing of it. Um, this is not actually a barrel I'm going to use. But if I show you an SP1 barrel, uh, the actual difference between the fitment here is, you know, we're, we're talking a Nats cock. I love that term, Nats cock, Nats cock. That's just brilliant. Nats cock means a very small amount. <laughs> not actually a Nats cock. I don't know if Nats even have cocks. P9. P9. So that's that bit there. Um, you should have been here for the boring. <laughs> oh, my machine was jumping! <laughs> it was like a 50s rock and roll convention. So enjoy that one. Uh, next we're going to do is flatten that off, uh, get that cleaned back. Um, then I can start working out the mount points inside the uh, main body of the Browning. And uh, from that point we can start putting the fire chamber in, we can start making up the aluminium mounts. Um, not too sure I'm going to do it yet. I might do it so one whole side of the Browning pulls off. Um, as you know by now, uh, it's one thing to build something. It's something completely different to build something that you can take apart. And this will have to be taken apart for uh, cleaning, ball breaks, stuff like that, etc, etc. Okay? Okay, hey, <laughs> hey, As you can see, clean that up lovely. That's ready to accept um, whatever barrel we're going to put in there. I think for this one, um, I might use this SP8 barrel. <laughs> you know how much I like. I just like the ends, you know, I cut these off, put them on other barrels. Um, it's just oversized at the moment. What we'll do is we'll run a reamer in here to get it exactly the same size as the barrel. Uh, let's pull that to one side, you've seen that now, a couple of times. Um, okay, back to the main body, let me just roll off the trigger uh, power in. Um, I think what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to cut here, we're going to cut here, and we're going to cut here, and then what we're actually going to produce is this... Um, it's going to have a removable body on one side. Um, the other advantage of that is that uh, once I've got this to one side, I can get that other part I just showed you um, just tack welded in place. Um, actually, you know, I might even do it all with bolts. Uh, got to be able to take it apart should you need to. Um, that way I can drop all the fire chamber in, get the fire chamber parallel to the uh, dummy 50 uh, barrel that's going on there. That way we'll have no balls bouncing about inside and uh, all should work out nice. Hey, hey, hey.